بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear viewers in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this program of the parables of Al Quran, we are going to read verses 26 and 27 from Surah Al Rum, which is Surah number 30 in Al Quran. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Awwadu billahi min al shaytan al rajim." وله من في السماوات والأرض كل له قانتون وهو الذي يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيده ثم يعيده وهو أهون عليه وله المثل الأعلى في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم To him belongs every being that is in the heavens and on earth. All are devoutly obedient to him. It is he who begins the process of creation, then repeats it, and for him it is most easy. To him belongs the loftiest similitude we can think of in the heavens and the earth. For he is exalted in might, full of wisdom. Now the main uh, main thing uh, in these two verses, that is, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has said, "Walahu al-mathal al-a'la fi al-samawat wal-ard," he got the highest, the loftiest, the most sublime type of similitude in the heaven, in the earth. One thing that is very clear, we have said it many times in these uh, lessons, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is above, above us all, and it is quite impossible to define Him in a way by which we don't resemble Him with any of His creatures. So this is why. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Fala tadribu lillahi al-amthal." Don't make similitude for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yani it is not, uh, it is not possible for you to describe Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as He should be described. Anyhow, for matters to make them more explicit, sometime you need some similitudes. To explain, and uh, this is why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has said that think of the loftiest thing, loftiest attitude, loftiest similitude, walahul masalul ala, and uh, that is uh, how we have to treat the names of Allah and the attributes of Allah. Here in these ayat, what is uh, the parable here, or what is The main subject which has been discussed. First of all, وَلَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كُلُّ لَهُ قَادِتُونَ. To him belongs everything in the heaven, in the earth, and everyone is obedient to him. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ. He is the one who begins, who begins the creation, and he is going to repeat the creation as well. He produced, and he can re- reproduce very easily. Wahuwa ahwanu alay. That is the most easiest thing upon him to repeat uh, what he has created first. Walahu al-masalu al-ala fi al-samawat wal-ard. To him belongs the loftiest similitude in the heaven, in the earth. Wahuwa al-aziz al-hakim. There is a. Saying of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, reported by Abu Huraira radiyallahu taala an. قال الله تعالى كذبني ابن آدم ولم يكن له ذلك. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, so it becomes a hadith qudsi. Allah said, the son of Adam says a lie against me, and it is not fitting for him to do so. وَالشَّتَمَنِي وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ ذَلِكَ 
he abused me and it was not fitting for him to do that fa amma takdhibuhu iyaya fa yaqul lan yu'idani kama bada'ani wa laysa awwalu al-khalqi bi ahwana alayya min i'adatihi as far as his lying against me that was when he said that the man said that allah would not be able to repeat my creation or to reproduce me and allah explains it by saying wa laysa awwalu al-khalqi bi ahwana alayya min i'adatihi to create in the beginning and to create in the end which one is easier for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing is difficult just like creating the first time he can create it in the second time wa amma shatmuhu iyaya fa yaqul ittakhadha allah waladan wa ana al ahad as samad alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad and as far as his abuse is concerned he said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken a, a son and allah is one allah is independent he did not beget nor was he begotten and there was none similar to him so when we understand try to understand this issue of uh, allah's attributes we should always uh, have in our mind the aya of surah asura laysa ka mithlihi shay wa huwa as-sami'u al-basir nothing is similar unto him and he listens and he sees here if we take these three principle that is going to help us a lot first of all we should uh, believe that nothing is similar unto him the attributes of the creatures do not resemble the attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the first thing the second thing which we should believe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he gives us any of his attributes if he tells us about any of his attributes we have to believe in him so it would be quite amazing if you say that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributes something for himself and we deny it and the third thing is that we also believe in all those attributes which are given by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about him and then all the attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the attributes of perfection al kamal because some of these attributes may be found in the creatures but they are the attributes of defection they are not complete as far as allah is concerned the very same attribute is in its perfectness found in allah the end of this ayah laysa ka mithlihi shay wa huwa as sami'u al basir here is the clue there is nothing similar unto him but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, mentioned the very same two attributes for the man as well wa ja'alnahu sami'an basira and we have made the man the one who listens the one who sees and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about himself that he is as sami' al basir he listens and he sees and with the beginning of that aya laysa ka mislihi shay we can understand that the attributes of listening hearing in allah and in the creatures are not the same there is a great difference between two of them to what extent you can hear if uh, you are in a closed room sometime you don't hear any any voices uh, any sound which is out of out of this room you can't hear them some people they are very weak in their hearing they can't hear even uh, the slightest sounds around them near them what is our sight sometime we are uh, 
In darkness we can't, we can't see at all. We can't see beyond the wall. We can't see at our back. That is our sighting. But when we speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He hears even the cry, even the sounds of a very tiny insect hidden in the depths of the oceans. He can see that insect as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing livelihood for each and every of his creatures, including that insect in the depths of the ocean. So there is uh, no comparison between the attributes of Allah and the attributes of the human being. There are some scholars uh, who have discussed uh, this, this subject in detail, and some of them, they got uh, this opinion that uh, we, only, uh, we only find out that seven attributes could be attributed to Allah. Others, we have to try to find out other meanings for them. Now, these seven attributes are just like the other attributes. If you, if you say that among these seven attributes, uh, let me take them first. That is Al-Qudra, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able upon everything. Al-Irada, fa'alun lima yurid. He does what he, what he wills. Al-Ilm, which is the knowledge. Wallahu alim. Inna Allah alimun bi kulli shay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. And then, after ilm, al-hayat, the life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hay, al-hay, al-qayyum. And then, as-sam'u wal-basr, the hearing and uh, the sighting, which we have already mentioned. And then, al-kalam, which is the speech. What we are saying that, as long as you approve all these seven attributes, and you also say that all these attributes are found in the creatures, but Allah's attributes do not resemble the attributes of the human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and people got the knowledge as well, but there is a great difference. Are you say a hell of difference between the knowledge of Allah and the knowledge of the human being? In the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got his will and the people got their will as well. But there is a difference. In the very same way, take any other attributes of Allah which is mentioned in Al-Quran and you can say the same thing that this attributes of Allah is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its perfectness. As far as the human beings are concerned, they may have this attribute but very defective, very defective. And with this we come to the end of this program وصلى الله تعالى على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته